Hey guys, Curtis Alexander. In this video, I want to talk about some natural ways that you can support your liver. So let's hop right into it. So when it comes down to supporting your liver, it's kind of a two-pronged approach. So first of all, we want to avoid some of these toxins that we're putting in our bodies that are taxing your liver. And next, we want to add in things that are going to support liver function. So let's start with things we can take out. And, and one of the first things, xenoestrogens, anything that plastic, you know, obviously that's not always possible, but it is a good idea. Pharmaceuticals is a huge one. If you're on a lot of medications, that is absolutely going to be very taxing on the enzyme system in your liver. Heavy metals, obviously alcohol consumption. You have to be honest with yourself if that is an issue for you. Uh, pesticides can play a role. Excess estrogen, if you're on birth control or you're going through menopause and on met medication that excess estrogen in your system can put a toll on your liver. PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. This is one everybody can lower, which is any sort of seed oil. You really want to eliminate those um, from your diet, period. They're very popular, used in restaurants, fast food, even high-end restaurants because they're cheap to use. So get seed oils out of your diet. And then stress, any sort of stress can be taxing on the liver. Now, what can we do to support your liver from a nutrition standpoint? First of all, big three here in the keto carnivore crowd are not going to like this, but you want all three macros. You do want saturated fat, very supportive for the liver. So are carbs. Uh, carbs are shunned nowadays. They should not be. For example, 80% of your thyroid hormone conversion happens in the liver you need glucose for that. It is true that you can get glucose from sources outside of carbs, but it is a stress-based process. We already know stress is going to be problematic for your liver. So have some simple carbs, have some good carbs. It is actually good for you. Uh, protein. You do not have to go bodybuilder crazy with your protein. Uh, I always recommend 0.62 to 0.8. I have another video on this, but 0.62 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight is a good range. You don't have to go crazy, but I would shoot for at least 80 to 100 grams of protein per day. You need B vitamins. Uh, you need good thyroid function. Now, this is a chicken or the egg. We already learned that a lot of your thyroid hormone conversion happens in your liver. If your liver is sluggish, you won't get thyroid hormones. So there is that issue. But if you have poor thyroid function, that's something you want to address. Uh, things like carrots is a big one. They can actually latch onto endotoxins and excess estrogen and get it out of your system, which will be helpful. Bamboo shoots and mushrooms can do something similar. I prefer carrots. Uh, small doses of caffeine can be helpful for your liver. Now some things, uh, castor oil packs. I personally have no experience with this, um, but I've had enough people that I know and trust that say it does help, that I'm comfortable recommending it as something to try. So castor oil packs, I'll put a link to some of these companies down in the description. Iron overload. There's a misunderstanding in our country, our world about iron overload. It is true that we get probably too much iron. We do want to, and that's primarily coming from these iron fortified processed foods. We want to stay away from those. However, there's a second part, which is our iron recycling system. And that's very dependent on our copper intake. Most people uh, aren't getting enough copper. That doesn't mean supplement with copper. It means get good whole natural foods. You'll get plenty of copper in those, okay? Uh, eating more frequently when your liver is taxed, it can have a tough time not having enough glycogen to support your, your energy and so on and so forth. So in the early stages, you may find it more helpful to eat every three to four hours until your liver is able to kind of get in a better state and have better glycogen stores. Um, couple of ones at the end here, uh, dandelion tea, there is some evidence that can be supportive of your liver as well as consuming more beets, that can be helpful as well. So like I said in a previous video, these liver detox, all this crap out there is crap. Um, I, I wouldn't waste your money on it. Instead, 
minimize your toxins and learn to support your liver naturally. And hopefully this video kind of wrap that up for you guys. Let me know in the comments, your thoughts, any questions, so on and so forth. But I really hope this was helpful for you guys. And again, make sure to go to my website in the description, get your free checklist. Very helpful. I talk a lot more about this stuff on my email list, you guys. So I hope to see you there and I hope the video was helpful. Thank you.